Believe it or not, it's been over two years since I drag raced the CEO of an insurance company in this. And in those two years, there's been a lot of change over at Buick. So I think it's high time that you and I come back and talk Buick as well as strategy. So change. Sometimes we're all a little bit afraid of change. And here's why. There's good news and there's bad news with change. This is no exception. The bad news, less horsepower. The old car, remember when uh, McKeel mopped the floor with my ass in that stage one GS, that car had 270 horsepower. This one has 259. But the good news, that's an entirely new engine, but not one that we're totally unfamiliar with. That is the same engine that comes out of the ATS, the two liter turbo. So in this application, it's 295 pound-feet of torque, so it's a bit more than the Cadillac. So overall, we're getting a car that has less horsepower, but has the same performance, and the fuel economy is just a bit improved. Okay, so really it's been, I want to say, over two years since I've driven one of these things. And I, I gotta tell you, there really isn't a huge difference from the car two years ago to this, even though there's less horsepower. I did drive just before this one, the stick front wheel drive, and the kind of bad news here, you can't get the stick with the all-wheel drive. And I gotta take my hat off to Buick because they were just brutally honest about it. They said, look, we'd love to make one and bring one over here with a manual and the all-wheel drive, but there just isn't enough people that will actually buy that car. And you know what? If you're gonna be honest with me with bad news, I have more respect for you, for you than you just give me some line, well, you know, there's some sort of problem with the technology, because you know there isn't. So you may remember the film that we shot with Akil where he and I drag raced the two GSs. That film actually started out in England, not Traffic City. And the car we were driving was a Vauxhall Insignia, and that was the VXR model. And the VXR basically gave you three things that this car didn't have. The very cool Recaro seats, the 2.8 twin turbo engine, and all-wheel drive. Well, we still don't have the engine, and uh, sadly we don't have the cool Recaro seats, but we now have the all-wheel drive, so someone's been paying attention. And uh, it's a cool system in that it varies the power to the front and the back. So basically you could have up to 100% front drive or up to 100% rear drive or any variation in between. This is the all-wheel drive car, automatic. And can I honestly tell you there's a huge difference? Not really, because you should remember the last car, it has that hyper strut suspension system up front. So you virtually have no torque steer in the front drive car. In this case, I will say I do feel a little bit more weight than the front drive car, which I would have to say is a positive here. It feels a little bit more sure-footed on these back country roads of Kentucky. Um, I would want to reserve judgment until we get back to, say, California. We'll bring it up to Malibu. We'll throw around the corners there, and me and Gene and I will tell you more about how the car drives then. So the big question General Motors has been facing over the past couple of years is, what do you do with Vauxhall? What do you do with Opel? What do you do with Holden? And of course, what do you do with Buick? And Buick's kind of a special case because the emperor of China used to drive a Buick. So at the end of the day, people in China buy Buicks. Matter of fact, they showed us the numbers and the order of magnitude difference of sales of Buicks in the US versus China, I thought it was kind of like just a couple of points more. Turns out it's more than double the sales in China that is in the US. So that was really the business case of what do you do with Buick? But then you get to the question of Opel, then you get to the question of Vauxhall especially. And that's where they decided, let's bring the strategies together. Buick, think elegance, or at least that's what General Motors wants you to think. It's an elegant car, and it is. You know, I grew up on Buicks, man. My mom, she used to have an Electra 225, and that thing was awesome back in the day. When I have some garage space, I want to get an Electra 225, 65 convertible in red with a black interior and a black top. But that doesn't make a brand. What makes a brand, or really what makes a car company, is how do you get efficiencies? All the switch gear, you know me, I'm a bit of a detail-oriented guy. It's totally different on the inside, and you know, that's a lot of money to change that kind of stuff on like a mid-cycle refresh. But we're not talking about little basic things where they changed the way the buttons look. It's the overall dashboard has been changed. Like the buttons have been moved around. But most importantly on the steering wheel, they've, cho they've chosen to use these five-way controllers, which, you know, if you've used any kind of game controller, it's kind of the same thing. But the build quality, I mean, this thing says to me, it's built in Germany. 
but a big change from last time. This one is actually built in Canada. The one we uh, drove before, that one was built in Germany. How do you keep those disparate brands alive and still remain profitable? And the answer is actually more simple than you think. It's actually aligning the different brands in different regions. So instead of making one car that would be, say, for Europe, and then another car, say, for America, what they do is say, you know what? This is what we need in China for Buick. This is what we need in the US for Buick. And this is what we need in Europe for a Vauxhall or an Opel. And instead of being reactive, like in this case, this was already going to be an Opel and a Vauxhall. And they said a couple years down the road, hey, you know what? That'd be a pretty cool Buick. Now they're saying, okay, we're gonna need this size car, this class, this features, this wheelbase. And they figure out how do we pair that with Opel, Holden, and Vauxhall. So click here to watch one of our 250 other episodes. Click here to subscribe. And can we ask you guys a favor? Can you watch these within the first 36 hours? Because it gets us more views, which gets us more dollars, which gets you more episodes. And of course, follow us, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time.